All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I am Jeffrey Richardson, Director of Product Marketing here at Cochaba. We're excited to have you here for this webinar today. We're going to give a few more moments for folks to join, and then we're going to kick off into our official discussion. If you are joining, please feel free to hop into the chat on your right side of your screen. Our very own Matt Goodrich is there as our community manager today. Uh, let us know where you're joining from, your job title. We love the engagement. And if you do have questions, uh, you can post them in there, uh, but I'll cover a few opening announcements here in a moment just for some housekeeping and let you know how to use the Goldcast platform here that we're on today. So I give a few more moments. Awesome, a cold London, it looks like. Turn in from Henley on the Thames. Very nice. NYC with Ashley. Awesome. We're glad to have you. Savannah, Georgia. Perfect. All right. Well, it looks like we got a good number of folks joining here, and we are one minute past. So let's go ahead and kick off. I'm going to kick off with the announcements at this point. So again, we love engagement. So connect with us on the chat. Ask questions via the Q&A tab. You'll find those on your right side. We're going to try and get to as many questions as possible today. If we don't get to a question that you ask, we will follow up with you after today's webinar. We often get asked if the webinar will be recorded. The answer is most definitely yes. And everyone who registered and or attended will receive a follow-up email within about 24 hours with a link to watch the webinar on demand. So keep an eye out for that. We have a number of amazing resources uh, from Cochava, as well as our partners at the DPAA and Advertiser Perceptions in the Docs tab. So be sure to check those out. You can click and open those in a separate window and browse those after the event. Some really great content in there, and we'll speak to that a bit further. And last but not least, uh, be sure to follow us online uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, slash X, LinkedIn. Uh, this is a huge topic, so we won't cover all aspects of it today, uh, but excited to uh, connect with you online. So at this point, I am going to go ahead and bring our speakers to the stage in order to do introductions here. So I'm going to bring on Barry. I've got Grant and I've got Noah and Sarah. So we'll let them join here. Hey, Grant. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Sarah. Great. Noah and Barry. Perfect. Welcome on stage, everyone. All right. So um, I want to go ahead and have each of you go through and introduce yourselves. Um, and let's start with Sarah and then Grant, and then we'll do Noah and Barry, because uh, then we'll kind of hand off to Barry for some opening intros here. So Sarah, kick us off if you can. Thank you, Jeff. I'm Sarah Bolton. I'm the EVP of Business Intelligence at Advertiser Perceptions, and we are the research partner for this insights program. Great to have you. Thank you, Sarah. Grant. Hi, everybody. Grant Simmons, VP of uh, Cochava Foundry. And, and most folks would know Cochava as a mobile measurement provider. So a company that helps, you know, brands with apps help grow their, their app um, portfolio. But uh, the strategic consulting that Foundry provides is largely around sort of two aspects. So one is helping brands like that and we become an extension of their analytics teams. The other one is around advanced measurement. We're going to get into that today. And I think what's interesting is there's a little bit difference between perception and reality, and, and uh, AP did a remarkable job pulling together the study. But at the end of this, we're going to look at some measurements that we've, we've uh, run against digital out of home. And at this point, we've done hundreds, if not thousands. And I think there's some interesting and some juicy aspects relative when we think about demand. And there's enough happening in the iOS and Android ecosystems right now that actually it allows digital out of home to be on the same footing of, let's say, mobile DSPs. And so, Excited to break that down later on. Thanks. Thanks, Grant. Noah. Hi, everyone. I'm Noah Klaus. I am the VP of membership at DPAA. We are a global digital out of home marketing and trade organization. Um, you'll be hearing a little bit more about you know what we do around the world to promote digital out of home. And you know I've been working with Sarah and Grant um, from the AP and Cochava team to help build this survey and study. And this is, I think, our you know third or fourth year doing so. So I'm excited to have you guys all participate. Hear a little bit about what we've done. And um, we'll let Barry kind of tell you a little bit more about you know what we do with this study and around the world to promote digital out of home. Yeah, thank you, Noah. Barry, it's all yours. Excited to have you from DPAA. Great, Jeff, and uh, so terrific to have uh, Sarah here, and uh, we've also got, of course, Noah and Grant. We've got some great partners, 
in uh, Omni Channel and Advertiser Perceptions. I'm also so excited to say that it looks like we may actually top off over 400 viewers today. So welcome, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. And uh, look, Kachava is a terrific company. They're the leading real-time solutions for omni-channel attribution and measurement. Uh, they sponsored this year's omni-channel measurement uh, media decisions maker study, and it was conducted, as you heard, by Advertiser Perceptions. Both of these organizations we've been doing this with for a few years now, and uh, Advertiser Perceptions will also be joining us in our UK study coming up. And Advertiser Perceptions provides research-based strategic marketing intelligence. So great to have our members, Kachava, a real leader in real-time data solutions, as well as uh, Advertiser Perceptions. As we many of us know, uh, Out of Home is the fastest growing media vertical today uh, with revenues, and it's powered by the digitization of the medium. So what we're talking about is why. Why is Digital of Home so fast growing, so powerful and impactful for advertisers and of course consumers? As you see here, one incredibly brand safe environments. Unlike other media, there's no hate speech, there's no bad influence. The only star is the brand on all of our screens around the world. Uh, also, where Out of Home was once a top of funnel media, now, due to addressability, targeting, QR codes, um, uh, programmatic, we're able to go right down the marketing funnel and show attribution. So we're a top and bottom full funnel media now, incredibly exciting. Of course, as I started to mention, the digitization of this industry involves now using QR codes, which of course helps that uh, lower funnel uh, measurement. We're using augmented reality, VR, and 3D. In fact, I see uh, on the call, we've got Ian Brooks here, who's got one of the greatest uh, 3D platforms around the world. I remember from, from cold London, oh, it looks like also Adrian Cotterell from London. We've got folks from LA, New York, South Africa. Uh, by the way, DPAA has got members in uh, every continent except uh, Antarctica because of course in Antarctica, they don't look at screens. The penguins only look at icebergs. Uh, to continue with this chart here, we reach consumers on their daily journey on the path to purchase, at the point of purchase. So many members of ours are engaging the consumer there. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we are now an addressable medium. We can deliver ads by time, by temperature, by context, by available audience in front of the screen. And of course, we're deep into sustainability with members like E-Ink and using solar power. And as a one-to-many medium, we're very low on carbon footprint. Also, you can't skip the ads on digital out of home. And lastly, on this chart here, uh, as cable, satellite, and linear continue their massive decline, you can get video on our screens all over the world. We've got content, programming content, and ads, and there's not a brand or a consumer that doesn't wake up every day saying, I love video. So this medium, in the decline of other media forms, offers powerful video around the world for brands and consumers. Thank you, Jeff. I think we'll go to the next one. Who are we? And Noah alluded to this. We are the global digital out of, global out of home association that's driving the digitization, the growth, and the innovation of the industry. And uh, we do three big things here with our membership. One is we grow the industry. We have grown the digital out of home industry in many countries, in many ad budgets, with many brands, with many ad agencies. Number two, we grow companies, we grow our members, we help them with consulting services, with introductions, with knowledge, with programmatic training, with other elements that we do that really helps our companies uh, get powerful and grow because we are uh, not just a trade association, we are a marketing machine, we're a connectivity machine. In fact, I like to say we're a connector, we're a concierge, we're a consultant, all of that for our members. And our third big thing that we do is we grow people. I am very proud, for instance, of our women's empowerment program. We do, W-E-D-O-O-H, a women empowerment in digital out of home where women around the world get a chance to talk about their challenges, their opportunities. In fact, join us through this QR code on September 17th, where we have our expert leader who drives these great interactive webinars, uh, Jen Willey. We've got from Ground Truth, the COO, Kate, who's an amazing woman. Ian Dallimore, one of our leading global members at Lamar Advertising, one of the most digital guys 
all around and then a great marketing and research person and friend as these all are at our front christina raggin and Raggin, who also came from the uh the agency site click your qr code we'll give you three seconds to sign up for this great webinar coming september 17th that's next week and we've got the different time zones for our global membership now to, oh, i just need to say this is all about navigating microaggressions which is important to look at because people do things they don't intend to do how do we make the world work better excellent let's continue with that uh then uh please everybody join us this is the biggest media and marketing event every year, the biggest one day media marketing event every year. We got close to a thousand people last year in the beautiful Chelsea Piers on the side of the Hudson River. Uh, go to dpwasummit.com to sign up and amazing speakers this year. Um, many of these people are my brand counsel, my good friend for many years. She used to run L'Oreal. Now she's running all of GM media globally. The CMO of Colgate, the head of Universal McCann, globally as well a wonderful german woman who lives in london who's coming to new york to our stage she runs all sustainability stephanie for omg adrian witter another personal friend who's driving programmatic at group m and i'm very excited if any of you have been watching any of the news in the past month if you've been watching the olympics or nfl and the night before the presidential the big consequential event we're going to have steve kornacki who is the amazing guy that is the political analyst for NBC, but does this great, amazing countdown of how states are turning, how the Electoral College is growing, and who's going to win, where, and how. So make sure you see this great celebrity there. And then, of course, click on the QR code to come to our summit. It's a big day. We can continue, I think, or reach out to us. Join us tomorrow. Anybody that can come to New York or is in, in New York, Please, um, Michael Lieberman, the leading U.S. out-of-home agency guy, terrific friend, amazing, brilliant man, um, is going to be joining us on stage along with the head of global commerce and retail media at Group M and WPP, Jeff Malman. Um, if you go to your uh, DPWA representative to find out how to get in here, everything we're doing is educating the industry, educating the brands, educating the advertisers along with our partners, Coach Hava and AP as well. So I want to thank you all. Now we're going to get into the study and uh, have a great session. And I think we're getting we're getting close to 400. How are we doing on that, Jeff? Yeah, I know we've got a lot of folks joined here today. So I really appreciate you being able to join Barry and, and give the intro and speak to those events. The links to those events are in the docs tab. So check those out. And I know Barry, you got to run now because you got a really important lunch you're you're uh, planning there. Uh, so thank you again for joining us, and, and we're going to dive into the uh, study results and some of the insights. So uh, I will kick Terrific, forward. Jeff. With that. Awesome. Thank you, Thanks folks. So much, Barry. All right. Well, let's see. The next thing I want to go ahead and do is um, I actually want to kick off with a audience poll so that we can gauge the awareness of our audience in terms of digital out of home. So let me go ahead and open that right now and you'll be able to take that poll in the sidebar. So if you look over in the sidebar where you see chat, uh, Q&A, the docs tab, there's a new poll tab and you'll see a little red dot indicator up there noting that a poll is open. So please go ahead and uh, vote on that if you can. And I'd love to kind of see the results as we kick off and talk more about digital out of home. And okay, good. Well, we've got a majority here that are are at five, very familiar. Nobody so far at totally unfamiliar. So a good spectrum, which is which is great because I think one of the big initiatives behind this, and maybe you can speak to this, Noah, uh, is educating the industry on digital out of home. So as I let this poll uh, bake here for a little longer, uh, Noah, can you talk about the reason behind why you work with advertiser perceptions and this specific study that was commissioned? Sure. Thanks, Jeff. So, you know, as I said earlier, I, this is our, our fourth year doing this study. We've done them in the U.S., Canada, and uh, soon to be U.K. And, and our goal here as DPA is a kind of global marketing organization is to understand um, what omni-channel advertisers and agencies, and Sarah's going to get into the methodology in a minute, what the perceptions are of digital out of home. You know, what do they like? What don't they like? What are some of the challenges that would unlock budgets? And obviously measurement um, is a big key that Grant will talk about later. It helps guide us as a marketing organization on what our initiatives are. It helps us understand where we need more education, but it also helps our members as a kind of a soft blueprint of how they could sell better. You know, what are some of the 
you know, attributes of digital video screens in venues that are attractive to different brands and marketers, those, uh, brands and agencies, those brands and agencies that have um, over, oversee decision making over multiple media, CTV, linear, video, at home, digital, et cetera. So it, it gets really deep into um, what they perceive digital at home as and what it is not. And it really helps us kind of um, plan our initiative. So, yeah. Yeah, no, thank you, no. And so, yeah, Sarah, can you give us the uh, the quick 30,000 foot view of the survey and the study and some of the key findings? Uh, sure. Um, thanks again, Jeff, and really happy to be sharing this research we completed with DPAA and Coachaba. And to take a step back on advertiser perceptions, just quickly, we're a specialized research and market intelligence company, and we focus exclusively on the media and advertising industries spanning all media channels and ad technologies. And today's insights focus is obviously digital out of home. And if we could go to the next slide. So what you're seeing here is information that actually comes from advertiser perceptions forecasting practice, which validates the growth that Barry was just teeing up. And by the end of 2024, this APDOOH forecast is projecting 18% year over year growth to 3.1 billion. And that's expected to grow again by nearly that much in 2025 to 3.4 billion. Um, I should note that these growth rates well outpace the advertising market overall, according to our ad spend forecast. So in other words, DOOH is one of the faster growing media channels. So. We'll dig into that more as we talk through our specific study findings, and you can go to the next. Um, so yeah, just a quick table setter. Our 2024 study was designed to better understand the DOOH landscape, what's driving momentum for the channel and investment decision-making dynamics. And to do that, we surveyed omni-digital advertisers to be sure we're picking up how the overall market is viewing digital out of home. So that's including, but not limited to just those with the most experience with this channel. And we defined Omni Digital as using at least three digital media types, or they could also qualify if they were using traditional out of home advertising, plus at least one other digital media type. We talked to 150 of them um, in this survey, skewing about two thirds agency side, one third marketers, and these respondents come from the Advertiser Perceptions Proprietary Panel of Ad Decision Makers. And the last thing I'll say here, Noah mentioned it, is that we've worked with the DPAA to conduct earlier versions of this study. So back in 2021, um, we did a, a version of this and where relevant, we'll highlight significant differences compared to findings from that 2021 survey. So next. So here is one of these growth focused findings um, from the research and at least eight in 10 will include digital out of home as part of their campaign recommendations within the next 12 months. So showing again that DOOH is in fact becoming a more common inclusion in the media mix. Next slide. And Improved advertiser education is one of the biggest drivers of digital out of home becoming more of a go to media type because the various capabilities and the newer digital enablement and innovations of the channel are all relatively newer to market. And that is exactly why we're here today, why Barry and Noah and their teams do the industry facing work that they do. Um, anything else you'd want to say here, Noah, that you haven't already? Yeah, sure. I mean, for those who aren't DPA members and, and for those who are, you're probably familiar, you know, our job is to help educate. I think um, Sarah mentioned it's whether it's through press, our conferences, you know, we're constantly at agency planning groups expel, explaining the capabilities of digital out of home, helping them understand who are the new companies out there. You know, we are have presence at major industry conferences that are, you know, not unique to out of home, CES, CanLines, and, you know, we're there trying to help uh, educate that and i think it's it's interesting to see that this was kind of the top responding response from um how to kind of grow the digital out of home pie so yeah and grant anything that you would um add to on that prior slide just as as you think about the planned inclusion of digital out of home in the next 12 months and media plans and what what you're seeing from the folks you work yeah. with in terms of the in terms of the 20 percent that at least according to this data 
um, don't plan on running digital out of home. That's sort of surprising. That that's going to shrink. We're gonna we're gonna see some numbers upcoming that we can expect are going to be decreasing probably significantly over the next couple of years. It's and we'll get into why. I mean, largely it's because um, video strategy is extending through all the media channels and the lines between social and out of home are getting blurred in some really interesting ways. And there's some companies doing some interesting things around that. So I think it's going to continue to um, uh, just have more take rate. Yeah. Well, let's jump into kind of, you know, the integration of digital out of home in terms of that, you know, inter-channel connection. Um, I know that's something that uh, we saw from the insights from the study. So, uh, Sarah, we've got a few of these quick insights lined up. If you if you want to, we could start by just quickly going through and having you do an intro on what we're looking at. And then I'd like to come back and kind of unpack the these points together. Yep, absolutely. So, so as Grant just said, one of the biggest growth dynamics has to do with integration. Um, and digital out of home is in fact part of video everywhere strategies. In this chart, we're seeing it's an extension or it's thought of as an extension of TV and video planning by seven in 10 advertisers. 28% of them say it qualifies when audio is part of the execution. Another 41% consider it part of TV and video plans regardless. Um, and then next slide. And so that's how they're thinking about it. Uh, and that's also a reflection. Here is a reflection of how teams are organized, which is something that's been evolving in the direction of holistic and integrated management for several years. So in 2024, half say that omni-channel video is managed by one team, and that's up from just over a third in 2021. And conversely, only 12% here report that video efforts are still managed by separate teams according to channels such as TV or mobile or, or um, digital out of home or digital video. Um, and that's down from nearly one in four in 2021 where things were still separate. So, you know, and we can see the rest here are operating in some middle ground um, hybrid model that again, clearly evolving in the direction of integration. Yeah. And uh, last thing, and then I'll, I'd love to hear more from, from Grant and Noah on these, but to wrap this up, three and four say that digital out of home has come out of an out of home sort of planning silo to become part of integrated cross-channel planning and buying. And of those eight and 10 say their media plans have enough fluidity to accommodate DOOH inclusion and my takeaway here with that second point is that there's never a wrong time to have these conversations, regardless of where we are in an overall annual planning cycle or a given camp campaign planning cycle, um, that uh, these are valuable conversations to have about how and why DOOH should be included. And, you know, I'll let Grant and Noah speak more on those. Yeah. Noah, do you, do you want to take a first stab or, or Grant, sure. I'll let you chime in in popcorn style. I think from a you know industry trade body, this is great to hear. This is leading to some of the revenue growth that uh, Sarah's mentioned, and I think a lot of the folks on this call have seen. You know, having decision makers who are able to control multiple media, you know, affect digital out of home decisions is great. We, I'm glad to see this trend continue, and we'll certainly keep asking this question in subsequent studies, and you know, hopefully have it you know as a you know fully you know integrated groups. So Grant. Yeah, I think there's a couple things. Hey, go back to slide uh, 21. Would you really quick? The, yeah, that guy. Yeah. So um, we're going to just see more integrated video teams. The one thing we don't talk about here is that video content's expensive, right? Long form video that you would shoot is like an interstitial video. That is, it's costly. There's a whole team behind it. It's a whole thing. And so as much as you can franchise that across all of your media channels, and then largely it comes down to a measurement challenge. How do we close the performative loops on this stuff? Well, the good news is there's a lot that's happening in the industry that's allowing that to happen. And so in terms of, you know, like you take a company, let's let's say like a Domi, who's taking TikTok influencer buys. They're running that at the same time in video screens as on platform and then creating retargeting opportunities off of that as well. And it's all the same media. And we're starting to see a lot of that social content show up on CTV as well. So the, the lines between the stuff are getting blurred. And I think people are going to think of it as a video strategy not a separate channel platform out of home CTV strategy. And we'll, we'll talk about the measurement around that here in a little bit, but that's, 
I, I see integrated just continuing to increase. And quickly, uh, this could be NOAA or it could be Grant, but uh, if we go back to that first poll and those that were maybe in the two or three range of familiarity with digital out of home, can you just give a quick uh, difference between out of home versus digital out of home and what That's that is? That's a good means? question. Yeah. So I'll, I'll start uh, at the 30,000 foot view and then maybe Noah can take us down to maybe the 500 foot view. But basically, digital out of home can be broken up into what is digitally enabled to be served versus what is run through a server side platform, right? And so you've got something that's programmatic versus not. I think the interesting question is, what percent of digital is programmatic right now? Because that's where this stuff really takes off and that's growing very, very quickly. I don't have those numbers in front of me, um, but you know, we got the difference between static and digital, but then we've got this notion of programmatic inside of digital as well. So we actually have different tiers of this stuff. No, what are your, yeah. Just, what's your just, just to add to that, someone had asked the question beforehand, you know, you know, there, there's traditional billboards, which, you know, historically have been, you know, roadside that can be digitally enabled or static. And, and in fairness, not all digital is programmatic, although most of it. And then there's um, in the last 10 years or so, a lot of kind of digital video networks and gas stations and gyms and airports, you know, elevators, taxis that you guys have all seen. So is co combined that is kind of the universe of digital out of home from large format billboards and spectaculars you may see in you know piccadilly and times square to digital taxi tops or you know a full motion digital video at a gas pump and all of that is kind of the universe of, of digital out of home these days and it's in any venue type that you may be familiar with there's a good chance there is a out of home screen it tends to be digital you know whether 7-eleven convenience stores groceries etc you know that is quickly growing and you know gaining a lot of traction yeah, do we sure. know? Anybody know? And feel free to put it in the chat. Also, what percent of out of home is programmatic right now? And if we just think of that within the digital sort of side of it, I don't know. I think it's probably under ten percent, but I don't know that as a fact. Yeah, and I wonder how it's nuanced by by provider network. Seven percent uh, from Claudjeet in the in the chat here. So interesting. Okay. And Barry just mentioned bowling centers with bowling TV and yeah, now this is great. I, I will call out real fast. Um, if you have questions, feel free to throw them in the chat, but we also have the Q and A tab. Um, so post them there. I did open another poll in the background, separate from our first one, just inquiring with any brands and agencies if they are planning any digital out of home media buys and campaigns in the next 12 months. Um, so feel free to take a look at that and, and vote in the background. And at some point we'll, we'll cover that. I do want to jump and um, talk about the perceived measurement challenge uh, with digital out of home and even even traditional out of home grant, because I, I know your team has done work in both. Um, so maybe same kind of style here a little bit, Sarah. I've got a few slides here that are just um, insights and some tables and charts out of the study. Um, can you voice over what we're looking at and then we can come back to Grant and talk through some of this? Sure. So, you know, we've talked about drivers of the growth of the channel, but what might be holding back more um, digital out of home investment right now and measurement has emerged as a top perceived challenge. And in this chart, we're looking at um, in spite of improving uptake and fluency over the last few years with DOOH, there's still a lack of awareness of some of the digitally enabled and measurement capabilities available. So um, all of these capabilities that range from kind of measurement and you know, more sophisticated um, targeting or retargeting capabilities are all under 50%. So keeping in mind this sample of digital decision makers, these aren't necessarily DOOH specialists, obviously. Um, so, so room for improvement on kind of education on some of these things. Yeah, and we can see where the trends are going. I so appreciate the fact that you have sort of historical numbers on this. If you want to go back to that one real quick, Jeff, it's, you know, the, the big one here is that, you know, that, that top slide is digital out of home doesn't work well with MMM, right? And I would argue, yeah, it, 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 it does. And we're seeing a lot happening in MMM right now. And I would argue you have the one sort of the, the, the kernel of ingredients that you need for an MMM model is largely available in digital out of home right now, which is cost by geo, right? You, it, it's at the right grain. And if you can get the conversions at that same grain, well, now you've got a great input for a model. We've had, we've had great success for this. So I, I, I expect that digital out of home will play directly as a first, as a first party citizen into um, MMM models. 
So yeah, we can go on to the next one now, Jeff. Well, I didn't mean to actually, Yeah, give him, actually it might work to park on this for a minute and unpack this one. Then we'll go to the next one and have Sarah do the same things. I also would like to get into the mobile ID based ad targeting and thinking about that from third party, like globally unique identifiers that are in some cases going yeah, away well, first party. One call out I need to make there is if there's any brands on, on, on the call, the best first party data you have is derived off the SDK in your app, right? And so if you're using a mobile measurement provider like Kachaba or an app supplier or a branch or anybody, you have a rich, rich universe of deterministic uh, data that is yours and yours alone. And and your ability to share that and use that for measurement is is 100% in your purview. And there there isn't better data out there. It is the best data. And so I just want to make a, a call out for the importance of first party data, particularly within the mobile world, derived off of SDKs is very, very powerful on this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I know there's a, there's a multiple others deep there as we go further down. Uh, one question that just came in from, from Tomas, um, is just about a question on does this type of measurement or uh, digital out of home work in, in Poland? And I know there's probably some some regional nuances to what's available for purposes of measurement targeting based on geo specific privacy policies, et cetera. Yep. Is that yep. something that you want to follow up with or do you have anything on, on the cusp here right now you can comment I, I would on? say largely Poland's probably fine. Um, they're not in that sort of GDPR footprint where most folks don't really want to play around. Uh, we yeah. can get into the nuances of that later, but yeah, um, yeah there's there are some geographical biases in terms of what is available, um, and we'll we'll maybe cover that when we get to the measurement section here in a little bit as well. Yeah, great call out. Okay, uh, and then lack of ROI data being the biggest concern still with uh, digital out of home. Sarah, can you speak to this one, particularly the difference with the 2021 results in that top? Yeah, line that absolutely. So perceived lack of ROI data is the top blocker. Uh, advertisers see with DOOH right now, four in 10 indicated it's among their top concerns. But to your point, we see that's in red. It means it's statistically significantly declined from when we measured this in 2021, when 57% said it was their top concern. So it's still, you know, the number one thing to address, but uh, it's improving in terms of the kind of size or scope of it as a, as a blocker or a concern. Um, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I view those first two as the same sort of issue, which is really largely the measurement measurability issue. They can't close the measurement loop or they can't close the measurement loop in a time frame such that they compare it, compare it to their other media sources. And so it doesn't play well with historically with, with MTA analysis because uh, the performance can't be tied back and that uh, for the same result that you can't produce ROI. And so that's historically been true but you know we can see the trends that the perception has has uh, got a lot closer to reality. That yep, this stuff can be measured performantly or performantly. Thank you. If I can mention on the third one as well, you know, d d developing appropriate creative. That's something we've heard um, for time over years. You have different screen orientations, vertical and horizontal. You know, most of the media owners, and I'm sure many on this call, have internal production capabilities that can take you know either existing creative for other media assets and repurpose it so it works on their digital at home screen or have a you know design studios that can you know work with the agencies to develop you know best in class creative um, using their best practices so you know while we see this is still a third issue it's largely probably due to you know educating you know the brands and agencies yeah and actually uh, jumping in on that same point with the developing digital out of home creative uh, another audience member commented and asked about, you know, what about mixing digital out of home and adding in social networks? And you had already mentioned that previously with TikTok's the out of phone initiative. Um, mm -hmm. Can you speak to that a little bit more, Grant and or Noah, and the potential leveraging of a creative that's maybe used for CTV or social and you just being able to repurpose that for an activation on digital out of home? That's exactly it. But, it, it, you know, it, it's sort of getting taken to the next level now in terms of an ongoing conversation with the consumer, wherever the consumer is. Right. And so the same influencer showing up in different contexts on different screens. Um, and it doesn't all have to be the same message, but it's all in support of the brand that's being reached on CTV and it's being touched on their mobile devices. Um, and they're seeing it in, 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 in real life as well. And it's all a cohesive video, right? It looks the same. It feels the same. It has the same narrative. Uh, it has the same eye-grabbing nature in terms of the layout. And so 
um, it's, it's sort of exciting to watch this take off, you know, particularly TikTok's leaning heavily into it. Um, and I've started to see TikTok creative actually on CTV that I've seen out in the real world. For those who live in the New York area, I think there's uh, TikTok creative running on, you know, intersection, you know, kiosks that you'll see throughout the city, um, on billboards, um, on gas stations. So they're through partnerships with TikTok and other, you know, social influencer agencies. They're able to, as Grant said, you know, retake that video asset um, that you would see on your phone and then, you know, amplify it to an at home audience, um, which is, you know, big screens, you know, in real life, you know, you know when you're out and about and offer kind of a different value prop, but uh, one plus one equals three, as we always say. Yeah. And uh, Ian, Ian Brooks noted in the uh, the chat here about, you know, his company develops 3D creative, uh, which can work on any digital screen. I've seen Super some of the- Super grab it. Yeah. Yeah, Super really I grab it. Yeah. I saw them Those for two years. Those are being delivered. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, well, let's jump into, um, these are just, you know, measurement capabilities that were cited that would move the needle on on future digital out of home investment. Um, can you give a quick uh, once over on this, Sarah, for us? Sure. And this is um, us asking them, what are they looking for? or What would help kind of close the either perceptual gap or comprehension gap in these regards? So they're looking for third party viewability verification. Um, and that's up since uh, what we saw in 2021. Inclusion in MMM and MTA multi-touch attribution analysis. And um, those, those are really the, the top three other forms of attribution. Um, but Grant, please weigh in here on the measurement capabilities that advertisers may not know about or know enough of, about. So um, yeah, I know we'll you have more color. Yeah, we'll get into the measurement a little bit. And we got a few things I think going on with this with this question. At the top one, it's really a question of verification. Like, were my, were my impressions met? And that's a really sort of different thing in digital out of home, right? One of the hardest things in the world to defraud is a static billboard, right? It is, it is known to reach eyeballs because of where it is. However, you could probably buy a Samsung TV and wire it up to a digital out of home SSP and just turn it on and set it behind a bunch of washing machines and just let it run ads, right? And so there is a true verification issue here. But, you know, that also sort of comes down to currency. What's the currency by which this plays? We heard this thing up above of, it can be counted as video if audio is played. Well, is that so that they can get an ACR record off of it so that they can play well in like a geopath currency? Or do they really actually need to have it heard? I don't know. But, um, you know, one of the, the verification, I think, is going to become an, an increasingly bigger issue. And, you know, the geopath will probably weigh into it. But ultimately, the the I, I do see that first one as being sort of interesting relative to a digital footprint in the real world. I can see some ways of defrauding that. And and when I think of fraud, right, we've, um, just as an aside, within Kochava, um, you can go back and, and, and uh, see our work on digital ad fraud. And what I can say is digital ad fraud is still the second largest criminal enterprise on the planet. And you can go back and Google Kachava and BuzzFeed and see what we did there. And we were hired as, as uh, expert witness in the biggest ad fraud lawsuit in history. So the point is, is that the incentives are there to try to trick this stuff. And we're going to see that in digital out of home. Hopefully it bears out in the measurement, meaning if the ad wasn't actually delivered, we wouldn't be able to, to, uh, to, um, you know, match conversions against it, but that's sort of a long slog. I, I see verification actually being an issue in digital out of home. What's going on with verification in digital? Noah, do you know anything? Sure, there's, there's a number here? of there's a number of kind of third party companies that are measuring you know verification. I think Veridu is one that comes to mind. Uh, I, I think not to keep talking about education, but you know, as you said, you know, a large billboard in Times Square, a static board, those don't have the viewability issues. I think the instance of hooking up a Samsung TV behind the washing machine is probably, you know, not a real world example and doesn't happen as often. And, you know, if you look at those who are measuring the audiences of the various out of home companies, um, verification is part of it. You know, I, I think that's some, an area for the industry to grow, but I am surprised when I see this as kind of the, the first area because we don't have the fraud and viewability issues that yep. you know you, you're, you've mentioned yeah yeah well let's jump grant um to this slide this one's one of my one of my favorites as well in terms of just you know talk about the history of measurements that 
Kochava through Foundry has done on digital out of home and, and other channels and what we're seeing in terms of the demand curve? Yeah, so I wanted to pull together sort of a, a, a couple simple stories around the measurability and how to sort of think of this stuff. And so, you know, just given the history, I, I come from a world of, of app growth. And so this is, you know, folks buying media to get folks to install their apps and sign up to loyalty events in their app and buy hamburgers out of the app and things like that. And so we measure a lot of mobile DSP traffic. We also measure a lot of CTV traffic and have, and have, have done you know, thousands of studies around that. And so what you're looking at on the page here is the result of roughly about 5,000 studies getting glued together. And it says, well, we, we have the same sort of data footprint in, in each of these studies where we know when the impression was served and we know when the eligible conversion occurred, right? And so there's some uncanny trends here that I think if you're buying digital out of home are important to, to remember. One is the demand curves longer, right? If you're buying uh, an ad on a mobile device and the conversion is also going to take place on that mobile device, regardless of the fact that Facebook is going to claim or, or try to get credit for that conversion 30 days later, the reality is all that demand happens in about four and a half hours. Ad was seen, human being responded, they took the action, right? If it takes place on the same device. Um, meaning if I see an ad now and I install 30 days from now, Facebook might say, hey, we drove that, but for anybody on the on, on, on the, the phone, I would ask you, what's the last mobile ad you saw? Can you remember when you saw 21 or 30 days ago? Probably not, but that's but Facebook's still gonna claim it. Google's still gonna claim it. Apple search ads is still gonna claim it. However, when we do that exact same exercise on CTV, where now the ad takes place on the living room device, but the conversion takes place on the couch sitter, well, we see that you have to leave that window open somewhere between six to 10 days to be able to capture that relevant demand. And when we look at that against out of home, it's more like seven to 14. And in fact, we've seen the stuff tra trail out towards 21 days in out of home. And so the point being is that the magnitude of demand is equal between these three channels, but the performance feedback is different, right? And so you have to understand that when I'm, when I'm moving environments, I have to hold that window open longer. And so this is a pretty simple example but I want to get into some other measurements. And I'll talk briefly about how I do it. Uh, Jeff, we want to hop down to slide 29. Yeah, let's and for that. anybody who's interested, happy to walk you through the, the methodology and have a deeper conversation around it. But we have a few different things. So let's go to the next slide, Jeff. Yeah, cool. So the first thing that we do is we read in all of the placements and the metadata, and that is when did the ad play, and all of the meta variables that it can carry. What, uh, you know, location, size, et cetera. Uh, what's the tactic, what's the creative, what's the ad set, where does it sit, as much data as we can get. And then um, we map that all into an exposure universe where we can match it to conversions by running it through our, our proprietary identity intelligence. And so there's a lot that goes into this, but let's get into some of the findings here real quick. And we'll start simple and then we'll get, we'll get a, a little more complicated. So if we go to the next slide. In terms of the, the performance outcomes that, that um, we've successfully measured, we've already talked about mobile apps, right? And so, you know, hundreds of um, uh, measurements now on the efficacy of, of billboards driving mobile app activity, installs, loyalty signups, deals taken in app, things like that. Same thing with websites. Um, episodic tune-in, we get a lot of this where a specific program was, uh, was marketed and we can stitch that together to um, the demand of that specific program. We can also measure footfall. Um, in North America, we've already pre-mapped all of the retail locations that we can um, track that in terms of ad took place on billboard, what was the conversion uh, in terms of folks crossing the lease line. And you see some really interesting stuff there, that, you know, no secret locations, everything. When you look at location or conversion rate by, by distance from where that board happens, the actual physical uh, placement, be close. Conversion rate goes up the closer it gets. Um, we can do brand lift uh, as well. Um, we're talking largely performance metrics here, but some folks need to understand what is the perception of my brand and we're able to do that. And finally, we're building an integration to be able to measure merchant level SKU type data tied to billboards as well. When I talk about tying it to billboards though, let's go to that next slide. One of the things you uncannily see is you know, we will capture all of the devices that had one opportunity to see the ad in two and three and four. And, you know, we'll group up that, that last group into 10. And what you'll 
uncannily see is conversion rate builds with frequency, right? And so you instantly know that your digital out of home ads are doing something because if they were doing nothing, folks would be no more or less likely to convert based on having seen one impression or 10 impressions. That, that, that blue line would just be a flat line. We don't see that. We don't see that again and again and again. But there's much more we can do with it if we go down to the next slide. This is a more uh, sophisticated example. And so this is a lift measurement around two different campaign moments for a uh, QSR app. And so the QSR app, because of their first party data within their app, track app installs and orders placed within the app and deals redeemed within the app, sign up to their rewards program and an overall sort of customer registration. And so these are the events that they're piping in for the purposes of measurement, first party data. They don't want to have it leak, but they can throw it into the hopper such that we can measure it, in this case, against a bunch of gas station ads. And so we write little polygons around all the little gas station screens, and we watch that for devices to come in and out of, and then glue it all together in terms of what we're observing off of that app data. And, and what we see here are some pretty realistic coefficients. We saw a 9.5% lift in app installs for the first half of this campaign. What does that mean? It means that for every 100 folks you touch with media, well, basically 90 and a half of them were going to take the action anyway. 90 and a half were going to install the app. Well, nine and a half of them did it because of the media. And so you can understand this in terms of an incremental basis, which is interesting, but you know, we have to pull a bunch of data into the hopper. We have to build a bunch of models. And basically once we collect all the data, we can produce this type of answer 10 days later. It's really deep. You get lift by creative campaign, geo, um, there's a thousand cuts on this, but not everybody wants to wait around that long. And so if we go to the next slide, the other thing we've been having success with is creating APIs of performance um, on an ongoing basis. And this is where digital out of home, in my mind, is starting to look a heck of a lot more like a mobile DSP. Because what we'll do is we'll take all of those conversion outcomes that we're trying to measure against all the placements, and then we'll create a different placement record based on the data we have. So what was the DMA of the board? What was the city of the board? What's the board ID? Is this static? Is this uh, digital? Which agency is in charge of this? We'll map that to devices and then create an ongoing conversion index against all of the performance activity that the publisher is trying to drive. And so we can feed this back on a daily basis. This thing's only about two or three days latent. And you know what else is two or three days latent now? Postbacks off of an iOS campaign. And so it puts you on the same par as a mobile DSP within your out-of-home world. And if we take it to sort of its natural conclusion, we can go to the next slide. And this is a real-world example for, in this case, a QSR app, where they're buying lots of video. They're buying video on YouTube. They're buying video on TikTok. They're buying reels on Instagram. They're buying it through, like, the trade desk on a DSP. They're also buying digital out-of-home ads in different geos. Well, ultimately, we can pull in all of that conversion data and we can calculate, in this case, the notion of an incremental cost per acquired um, customer. And so not only, hey, what was my effective cost per install for this mobile campaign? But ultimately, when I look at the type of post install performance data that the brand is reporting in terms of loyalty signups or burgers purchased in apps and things like that, let's call that the customer. And uh, figure out the acquisition cost by that. And so what you can see is you can compare your TikTok uh, buy on a acquired customer basis to let's say your uh, downtown board buy in let's say Denver, and you can start to decide off of it. And the feedback loops on this stuff are pretty quick. So I'm excited about this. We've, we've had a lot of success. Um, you know, we're starting to build this into platforms now. And so uh, I, again, I, I see digital out of home as being an overall video strategy um, to help understand customer acquisition. Yeah, it's a fascinating sneak peek into, into measurement. Um, we've got a some number of questions I want to get through here, and I also wanted to throw up the results of the uh, second poll that I launched a while ago in the background, uh, just looking at, you know, if for those in attendance that are advertiser, brand, or agency, is your team considering the addition of digital out of home into your advertising media plan? So a healthy, healthy yes, on that. And um, Noah, Sarah, you know, against the backdrop of what Grant just went through from a measurement perspective on what's available for, for digital out of home and being able to align more closely against a, almost a digital advertising worldview, um, any, any thoughts or uh, commentary you, you want to pepper onto that as we jump into questions? 
Uh, uh, no, I mean, that was great stuff, Grant. I, I think you are and the Kachava team are a good asset to the at home space. If, if, you know, I speak for DPA as we try to market this and help performance brands understand, you know, how to actually achieve their goals without a home. You know, the stuff that you guys are doing is great. Um, you know, we have a library of case studies at DPAA for anyone on this call, especially those who are thinking of adding it into their plans, um, who need, you know, examples of, of how it works, different inv inventory types. There's a lot of platforms out there that also have um, mapped all the inventory across the United States and throughout Europe. So we are here, DPA is a resource to help you guys spend more and become more comfortable. But, you know, I think, Grant, you did a great job explaining why Coachava is a great partner of ours. And, um, you know, hopefully there's some good follow up. Yeah. Well, let's jump into some questions here because um, we've got quite a few of them. So I'm going to close that final poll there and um, start to bring up some of the questions from the audience and we can we can pick these off here. Um, so one I wanted to share here is uh, about what about digital out of home via Uber cars? I know that Uber and Lyft and other uh, ride sharing companies have launched their own like almost video in real life, video everywhere network. So any thoughts, uh, and this is open to any one of you on, on this question. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll start, you know, um, there's a number of media players that, that advertise in ride shares and vehicles. We have, you know, the digital tops, Firefly does it. Um, there's inside the vehicles, Vugo. You know, DPA has actually all, also built a organization called Muha, which helps promote moving out of home. So there's static car wraps as well as digital top. So there's a lot of lot of players in this space, um, both digital video inside and digital on top. And you know, it's it's a great you know reach vehicle. You know, they're in every major city in the United States. I'm not sure exactly what the what the question was, but there are a number of players. And if anyone, if you're interested in finding out who all of them are, let me know. Yeah. What I've seen on the on the moving media is scale. It's performative. It's a little tougher to measure, but um, there hasn't been sort of an aggregation of supplies such that, you know, Uber certainly would be the biggest. But, um, you know, in terms of what I've heard, scale tends to be an issue there. And in terms of Grant, this goes back to a question uh, that you touched ah, on. What question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, this is a this is a this is a really big question, and and the data that we deal with is is consented and robust, but there is some geographical bias to it. And so ultimately, how many maids are available for the purposes of of this type of measurement has a lot to do with a lot of things. What I'd say is generally in North America, South America. Um, APAC is generally pretty good. GDPR is generally out, if that's uh, at all some, some decent guidance. Um, but there's a lot of movement happening in the space right now. I think what we're, we'll end up seeing is, is the notion of a lot more clean rooms stood up for the purposes of measurement because there's enough sort of first party data out there that would be very, very valuable for measurement um, that folks want to use for that purpose but are unwilling to expose to the industry. And so we're seeing, in, and they're starting to, to stand up some, uh, some clean room options around uh, the ability to pull in data that is deterministic, is um, a little more granular, but um, is generally not generally available. Yeah, yeah. Another one that came in here, um, and we talked a little bit about digital out of home creative earlier, but I wanted to resurface this one. Any thoughts either of you would share on how you can maximize your digital out of home creative investment? I mean, I would just say the the out of home formats can be anywhere from very large to you know, you know, very engaging. And depending on what your objectives are, you know, we've seen anamorphic three D that is you know relives on social and you know on YouTube for for forever. We've seen you know impactful messaging at you know the gym talking to a fitness goer. So it it, it depends. Um, you know, creative can be tailored to the physical environment, the grocery environment versus a gym versus a gas station. Or we can do some really cool stuff in some of the largest screens in the world that you've ever seen that are, you know, yeah. crazy high depth. So, you know, there's there's a lot of um, creative agencies, creative media shops that are proficient at helping, you know, deliver the best creative asset for the best screen. But, you know, if you think of all the different environments and locations, there's just so much cool stuff to do. And, you know, DPA has videos in case, as I mentioned earlier, to to inspire anyone that wants to, uh, you know, get their hands dirty. And could I add one more thing there, Noah? It's from our same study, but we ask about when they consider digital out of home in a typical campaign cycle. Is it in the early planning stage, kind of the middle mm -hmm. stage or 
or a little bit more of an afterthought. And you know what we found both through the survey data and the conversations that we have with the um, kind of tip of the sphere of these advertisers is that when it's planned up front along with the other video executions and really thought of more strategically, that creative investment can go a lot further. And I know Grant, you kind of alluded to that as well a, a bit earlier. Yeah, you know, my two cents on that is is for the for the for the entity writing the check, figure out the measurement paradigm that works for you. Because everybody's gonna be on some spectrum of I need a good answer now versus a perfect answer later. And where am I on that? Such that this is a measurement framework that can work for me. And once you get there, test the heck out of it. That's how you maximize it. You test the heck out of it. Absolutely. We had a, a question that actually came in from uh, one of our registrants. Um, so I, I love the way it's worded. It says, it says, forget buyer perceptions. Where does digital out of home sit in terms of the CFO perception? And so um, mm. open to any of you, you know, as, as budgets are tightened and um, ROI is, you know, a question, uh, how would you respond to that question? I'll let you take that one, Grant. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be bottoms up. I'm not sure how many CFOs are in the are in the inner workings of ad tech signal delivery, right? You know, at the end of the day, we're sort of all data strategists trying to figure out how to make um, make the most out of sort of the footprint we're sitting on. And that's not necessarily the CFO's job. The CFO's job is to listen to the inputs of his lieutenants and figure out what is the right sort of framework that I want to put on this. And I would argue that in, in you know, at least at the CMO level, folks are starting to think about video as a strategy, not as a channel, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a that's a bit of a, a bit of a move since let's say five years ago, where video was its own thing sitting over here. You had your brand team that would run your out of home. Those two would never talk. Your mobile team would sit in the middle somewhere. Um, and so we're starting to see this, I think, become a little more holistic. Mm -hmm. Here's another question that came in. Uh, how can I find the best inventory to buy out of home slash digital out of home? Well, I would say all of it is the best inventory. So, you know, that's <laughs> a, a tough question. You know, it, it depends, Michael, um, you know, what your objectives are. You know, there's a lot of, you know, there's Vistar, there's Hivestack, there's Broadside, there's a lot of programmatic yep. SSPs and DSPs that know the out of home industry well that have access to, you know, all the boards and digital at home inventory across the world. Um, so you could start with some of them, obviously reach out to DPAA, we can help you. There's media agency specialists, uh, you know, Group M, at Talon, et cetera, that, you know, also, you know, live and breathe and have been buying this inventory um, for a while and, you know, really can help you figure it out. So I, I, I don't know from, from my perspective, if I would ever classify anything as best inventory, um, it, it is all valuable and offers, you know, advantages for, for different marketers. Yeah. Any other thoughts on that, uh, Sarah or, or Grant? It, it's so brand dependent. I mean, I would want to dig into sort of what's the brand and how compulsive or considered is the offer. I mean, there's some real, there's some, um, uh, you know, locations important. If there's a physical component behind it, that's a huge consideration. There's just a lot that goes into it. Yeah. And maybe the the measurability question up front too. I know that that's the big part of the yep. planning. Phase, Any right? close the loop on it? Yep. Yep. For sure. Well, I uh, want to remind folks again of the documents in the uh, docs tab that are available. We've got uh, some great um, uh, landing page in there from Kochava around Kochava Digital at Home Measurement Solutions, a, a recent blog around the evolution of this channel. We've got the Advertiser Perceptions blog in there as well as their Insights Hub. And then uh, the report, the, the study that this, this whole webinar uh, it has been looking at, uh, there's a link as well in the docs tab to jump to the DPAA site where you can uh, request um, that. So feel free to check those out as well as the links that Barry talked about for events coming up on DPAA's schedule uh, here in the next month. And it, Noah, any yeah, final- Jeff, if I could just, yeah, I appreciate it. I just wanna say thank you everyone. You know, as I said earlier, this is, DPA does this study um, every few years in different markets around the world to really understand how to grow the channel. So I'd like to thank Sarah and her team. Obviously, always we will work with you and Grant as well. Um, at our big annual conference in October that Barry mentioned, we'll be talking more about this report um, with Coachava. So anyone who 
wants to attend, please do. And as Jeff said, you know, there's a 50 page report. We went through five or six charts and, you know, Grant talked about some real world executions and, you know, while why digital out of home is hot, but, you know, we have all types of different charts about, you know, why the industry is growing and what these omnichannel marketers are thinking. So, you know, reach out if you want access to the full, I think it's not 50 pages, but about 30 pages, uh, that, yeah. that Sarah and her team and Grant's team helped us all right. So thank you everybody. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, brings us to the top of the hour. So to be respectful of everyone's time, uh, we'll, we'll call it a wrap. So thanks so much, Sarah, Grant, Noah, Barry thank as well. So and uh, Yeah. Have a great day. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.